As we begin to reopen, we need to have good data. I sat down a little while ago with Murray Aiken, Senior Vice President of Icubia, and Bob Briscoe, CEO of Internet Brands and WebMD, to talk about the type of information we need. Could we have some type of reopening index? And what's the role of human data science as we look at trends and try to make decisions? Thank you both for joining me. Murray, you have this concept of a reopening index where you've talked a little bit about moving somewhat from a national perspective to a subnational, looking at what are the dynamics in the local community. Can you explain that a little more? Sure, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about our, our favorite topic here, which is really how to uh, grab the, uh, the, the, the data science capabilities that we have integrated with what we know about human science. Uh, we call that human data science um, and, and apply that. We quickly need to get beyond uh, talking at national levels and talking at um, subnational levels. Uh, there is a question as to whether the subnational level uh, should be states. Uh, or even within states, uh, or we have another way of drawing a map of the United States, which is really based on what we observe every year with uh, flu season, uh, where we see the pockets of activity that uh, transcend state lines, and we actually think is a, is a more useful way to talk about subnational units. Uh, that being said, not much gets measured on that basis, but we think it's important as different parts of the country re reopen, quote unquote, uh, in different ways and at different paces, uh, that we're able to look at the impact uh, that 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 is having. So, hence our our you know call for uh, some type of reopening index, and I can I can talk about what I think the elements uh, could mm -hmm. be in there, um, and that we should be looking at that at a subnational level. Murray, can you tell us more about this human data science? That's not a term that most people are familiar with. Great. Well, uh, thanks for that question because uh, it's it's my favorite topic. A human data science is a combination of uh, three familiar words um, that really haven't been put together in in the way in this way in the past. And what the way we think about it is the intersection of human science and data science. So if I can start with uh, data science, we see you know, that there's a lot going on. Everyone's talking about AI and, and big data and, and you know, applying algorithms and, and so on. Uh, you know, first off, that's not straightforward and it's definitely not straightforward in, in healthcare. Uh, accessing uh, reliable and clean and linkable uh, data is, uh, as we say, not for amateurs. Um, and, and, and so th th there's an enormous amount of um, uh, activity and, and focus in order to really elevate uh, the uh, capabilities and role that data science can play. But then you've got to link that to human science. What do we really understand about human biology, about uh, disease etiology, um, about the progression of disease, about the impact that interventions um, have on on the human body and and outcomes and so on, uh, and you know there's still a lot of drugs that get um, uh, dispensed every year where we don't really understand exactly how they work. We just sort of know that they do, right? So there's there's still enormous gaps uh, in uh, from a human science perspective. Data science together can actually help enhance that understanding, and it's that linkage that we think. Uh, is very valuable. There's one other angle, and that's about human data. So we make a point of talking about human data as opposed to, uh, as, as supplemental in a sense to patient data. So patient data we define as information that's gathered when an individual interacts with the health system. And we know that that happens periodically um, and, it, and, and it's, a, it's an incomplete picture of that individual as a human. We also know that outcomes are very much driven not only by the quality of services that a patient receives or the drugs that they may be prescribed, but also a lot of other factors, uh, social determinants, behavioral uh, factors, and so on. Uh, we believe that in order to really advance our understanding 
um, of healthcare, we need to be pulling in a lot more of that human data um, into the data science and human aspects into understanding uh, human science. So that sort of in a nutshell is what we're all trying to bring together uh, in talking about human data science. In, in your view, is there a gap that's fairly significant now? Yes, there's a huge gap in um, A, the uh, quality and extent of the data that is being accessed and, and worked on that's coming out of the health system. There's still large gaps in the data. There's large um, interoperability issues, as, as you uh, probably well, well recognize. And there's huge gaps in terms of not capturing um, the, the non-clinical data, the, the non-patient interacting with the health system information, right? We, our EHRs generally are not capturing anything about um, the, the lifestyle of the patient or their social conditions or their work or home environment or their food supply and so on. Yet, we know that those have an enormous impact on, on outcomes across a whole range of um, diseases. So I think those are, those are big gaps that um, we, we really do need to close if we're really going to you know, make the progress we need. And, and as those gaps get filled in, do you think it unleashes a lot of insight that will yes. save uh, lives? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that being said, um, as I also remind our data scientists, uh, the value of data science, uh, no matter how great the data, is only def only uh, occurs, the value is only delivered when someone makes a different decision or takes a different action. And another gap that I feel is we've got a lot of great algorithms um, that are yielding great insights, but does that actually change behavior and change uh, 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 decisions and therefore change outcomes? And I think that's actually a growing uh, gap. Um, uh, because there's not enough uh, emphasis on what does it really take uh, to make that kind of a change. And it's more than just um, spitting out, you know, uh, the answer to, uh, uh, to, to an algorithm or, or a sort of quantitative output. Is, is, Murray, is another leg of this stool the, I don't want to go too far with this, but the, the patient's data themselves. I'm not going into the extreme quantified self, but self-reported health loops yeah. and, and post-care loops and, of course, um, devices that get other metrics would be part of that. But it seems like, is there, is there a lot of opportunity yes. in that area? Yes, and I think the evidence for that is growing. And by the way, COVID-19 is bringing more of that evidence to the fore because we've got more people, um, you know, self-monitoring, self-reporting, remote monitoring, therefore giving us more data points um, about the uh, individual. And as those data points uh, expand, so do uh, the insights. For example, what is the optimal time for someone to come back following their uh, cancer treatment for a checkup? Um, you know, that timing is not really evidence-based. And we reduce the, the sort of, if we can reduce the barrier of someone coming back for the checkup and make it more self-reported or you know, that there's more uh, continuous monitoring, uh, then I have a feeling that's also gonna change the frequency of uh, checkups, optimize it more and result in, in better outcomes. And, and again, there's, there's a growing amount of evidence that that is the case. Yeah, we're seeing in our um, Cranes business that we recently acquired and has discharge instructions for thousands of hospitals as we tighten up that link, there are gems in there about the self-reporting that if the clinicians understood them, the appropriate intervention at the appropriate moment can have be efficient and relatively inexpensive to do and power and have powerful effects. But the yes. gaps in knowledge there are, are fairly big, but they also seem relatively easy to close with digital technology. Now. Right. That's right. I'm, I'm reminded, though, of the uh, anecdote I heard when, when all the focus was on reducing readmissions to hospitals. And somebody made the observation that, you know, for, again, for all the sort of efforts to, uh, you know, tackle that issue, uh, the, the person who could best predict uh, readmission was the discharge nurse, who was the last person who saw the patient, saw who, if anyone, came to collect the patient, 
saw the means of transportation, and uh, from that information, in a human way, yes. was actually uh, the, the best equipped and, and, to and predict that brings in the whole concept of, of the care loop and the care yeah, community and, and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.